The following video is a discussion on gender and sexuality featuring two of our impact board members, artist, activist, and scholar P. Carl and Carmelin Malalis, commissioner of the New York City Commission on Human Rights, who both worked with us in addition to other consulting organizations, GLAD, an anti-violence project, in developing the character of Joe, a lesbian teenager who is on a journey of gender expression in our story. When her best friend Frankie, a bisexual teen and fellow activist, disregards Joe's feelings, it leads to one of the emotional pinnacles of our show, when Joe explodes into the song, You Ought to Know. Our impact board members were an integral part of our process, providing script and staging guidance, as well as training for the cast and creative team. Here is the conversation in which they are joined by lead producer Eva Price and performer Lauren Patton. We are living in an urgent moment right now for equity and representation in American culture. As arts creators, we are taking this time of pause to reflect on the vital elements of our process and how we can do better and move forward together toward being the most inclusive and authentic storytellers we can be. Part of that exploration is connecting with other artists and helping our whole community achieve these goals. So together with the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, we're opening up Jagged Little Pill's process of implementing an impact board of advisors, a committee of experts specializing in the themes and issues addressed in our musical. The topic of today's discussion is gender expression and identity. Joining me are some very special people, including our fabulous Oscar winning and oh. Tony nominated book writer, Diablo Cody, our Tony nominated actress, Lauren Patton, who plays the role of Joe, and two of our incredible impact board members, P. Carl and Carmelin Malalis. Carl and Carmelin, to kick things off, I'm gonna have you start. If you could share your reflections on the current state of gender identity and representation in American culture and entertainment. Carl, let's start with you. My background is that uh, I've spent pretty much my whole life thinking about gender. Uh, I'm a trans guy. I have a PhD in like things like feminism and that kind of stuff. I've spent my entire life uh, writing and making theater around uh, these issues. So when uh, I saw the question about the state of gender representation uh, in entertainment, I was like, well, I, I would need the whole hour uh, to even start. But I think really that... Uh, you know, we're at a time in the theater of reckoning, uh, and it's a good time. It's a time that we're not all uh, producing like we usually are, and we're in a reckoning around race and gender and uh, sexuality and uh, economic disparity. And uh, so it's, it's been an amazing experience uh, to work on this particular project because it's the first time that I've been on a, on a large-scale project like this where there was a commitment to talk in incredibly nuanced ways about uh, gender expression. Uh, and so I think this is a good sign of where we're headed. Thank you for that. Carmelin, how about you? So I am the chair and commissioner for the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Uh, we are the city agency that enforces all of New York City's very broad, very protective anti-discrimination and anti-harassment protections. So I come to this with a background doing a lot of employee rights related work, especially with LGBTQ communities. So I am also a uh, Philippinex lesbian, and I bring just my personal experiences to the work I do every day. When I was thinking about representations, um, today's representations of gender uh, and sexuality, you know, one of the things that I was thinking back to is for me just, you know, fascinating um, to see the different ways that explicitly we now talk about gender in, um, in TV shows or in, sh or in Broadway shows. So, um, 
you know, I see the, the work that this show has done as being kind of a natural progression of where we've been heading and a really exciting one. So I really do credit this, uh, this Tony nominated cast and show for, for pushing, the, uh, pushing us forward in this space. Thank you, Carmelin. In our show, the theme of gender expression exists within a beautifully complex character called Joe. Diablo, you mentioned before that you drew inspiration for the character from Alanis' song, Hand in My Pocket, which celebrates the concept of duality. A teenager on a journey of gender expression who rejects the idea of conforming to what's socially acceptable or being told she can only be one thing. Can you talk uh, a bit more about that inspiration and how you came to develop the character and the storyline for the show? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it all began in the very earliest stages of developing the show. Like you said, I had, I had listened to that song and I thought, okay, well, what does this really mean? And it sort of naturally um, inspired me to, to think about, you know, a young person uh, who might have a different gender presentation or a different form of gender expression and how hard it would be if you were growing up in a more conventional or a more traditional community, which Joe is. And, um, you know, I, one great thing about this process, I had never actually written a Broadway show before is because, you know, you start with your, your first draft in a workshop I was able to sort of develop this character with Lauren Patton, which is amazing. Like it was, it was a privilege to work with her and sort of figure out who Joe was. You know, ordinarily, you you write a you write a great role, and then you try to find the right actor for that role. And in this case, I had found a great actor, and then created the role for her. So it was, um, you know, we had, it, it, it was an interesting process because you find yourself, I've, I, I had to really educate myself on, on gender issues, which it, it, I have to admit, I went into this thinking I knew something and I didn't know much. <laughs> and it's been a real um, educational uh, opportunity for me. Yeah, I've heard from a lot of our creative team that developing all these characters, but specifically this character was particularly special. And listen, I I might be a little biased because she's in our show and she's Tony nominated and she's a wonderful person, but you know, Lauren Patton is a really special actor who originated the role um, from our very first reading and has been with us since and has been a huge part of the character's creation. And um, I think has, has done the work of what it means to create a character from, from scratch. Um, so uh, as we all are both fans and grateful to you, Lauren, why don't you take us through your experience in the character, the personal connection you feel about Joe's journey and, um, and tell us more. Uh. Sorry, I feel very emotional. <laughs> I'm like try, trying not to cry because um, it's also been a really special process for me too, because it, it is really, it's a privilege that you dream of as an actor to get to be with a show and with a character from its inception, from the very first moments of development and to then take it through all the way to Broadway. It's not, it's a super rare. So um, it's been, such a privilege for me as well. Um, but yeah, I, jo I joined in the first reading that we did in 2017. And I think, yeah, well, that was your first draft like ever, right? When we did that? Yes. Yeah, because I remember that there was no script for going in for the audition. I remember being like, oh, can I read a script? And they're like, no, there is no script. <laughs> it's not, we don't have that yet. So, um, so it really was so fresh when we got into that room for that whatever five days that we spent with the first reading. And um, uh, yeah, which is incredible to actually be a part of the show from that first draft. But um, I think that what I always, always loved about Joe and really responded to about what Diablo wrote was that this was a, a queer teen who really lived in a gray area and, and wasn't 
like, as you said, like doesn't have it all figured out just yet. That's the, the hand in my pocket quote, right? And um, I think that I really related to that because a lot of my relationship um, as I'm a bisexual queer woman and um, a lot of my own relationship to all aspects of my sexuality and gender in some ways that are like super public through my work in some ways that are super private too has been really fluid and complex and it's not always easy for me to articulate or explain to other people and I saw that in Joe this queer teen who was not trying to be able to articulate and explain it and didn't and didn't know how to yet and the external pressures that you feel from the world to explain yourself and to articulate yourself and I think that that's a queer experience I really related to a lot and you know uh, straight and cis people aren't expected to articulate and explain themselves all the time. And I think queer people are. And um, I was really excited to see the character that was representing that part of queer experience. I feel like so much I see queer characters on television shows and in plays and stuff who really, they, they know exactly who they are. They know exactly how they identify. Often the narrative is like, I've known since I was a kid that I'm exactly this. And it's really just about the trauma like really focusing on trauma, which is something we need, we need more of joy for these characters. And I love that Joe is both of those things, but uh, it focuses on the trauma that they experience from outside um, pressures and discriminations and prejudices. Um, and I was really excited with Joe to see not just those external pressures, but also what does it feel like internally when you're uh, newly understanding yourself as queer and, uh, don't know how how you want to show that to the world yet. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I mean, we think about the journey of Joe and and you know the humor and the confusion and the the varying sides of her and it it's it's about it's about developing herself. It's about finding herself and how she's going to communicate. Right that 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 was manifested through so many wonderful traits. Um, so the. The idea of um, of establishing an impact board for the for the development and creation of Jag Little Pill came because when you're pursuing socially responsible storytelling, it's pretty vital that you admit what you don't know. So we began developing the show back in Cambridge in 2018, and we began to see groups of trans and non-binary audience members voice their personal and emotional connections to Joe. And we were so moved by that response. Lauren, you were so moved by that response. The Diablo and Diane Paulus, our director, were so moved by that. And even though Joe was not written as a non-binary character, we as the creators of this musical embraced the fact that the role had a breadth of resonance for many. Um, but what we learned through our work with the impact board is language matters, especially when it comes to identity and when it comes to representation. So Diablo, I'd love to turn back to you for a minute to talk about the important work that the impact board did and helping clarify Joe's journey. I learned a lot. And what I really learned is that there's no monolithic experience for people in terms of gender and sexuality. You can't say this is the right way to present this issue. There is no right way. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's, someone's perspective will be excluded because you're not, it, it's, it's truly impossible because I can tell you as, as, a, as a diplomatic person who likes to please everyone and is, intent on hurting no one with my art like it's that's incredibly important to me like the last thing I would ever do would to be it would be to write something that was deliberately offensive or exclusionary or triggering you know so for me having that education was so important and because even though I know that I can't be I can't be perfect in how I convey a character's experience I can at least have the the knowledge of knowing that I was as informed as I could be and as sensitive as I could be. Yeah. So I that I, I was so grateful to have that to have access to to that education and and, and different perspectives. And that I, th I thought it was I thought it was truly incredible what we were able to do as a production. And just I to have that breadth of information, I, I didn't ever expect it. And it was, um, I think, the, you know, the show, it, we had to, you know, and I'm glad. 
you know, we see Joe in the show at, you know, a snapshot of her life, right? Like one year, the future is open and, you know, and, and anything's possible. So Carmelin, can you add some additional reflections from, from your work with the show? It is very difficult when you are creating anything to also have the vulnerability, to express the vulnerability to say, I don't really know how to do this perfectly, but it takes having and embracing that vulnerability in, to do something well and to do something with intention that does not, or that tries not to offend or to, to not include folks or to, um, to render people silent. And I, you know, I was, as, um, as Diablo was, was talking, I was thinking about when I was engaged in this project and it was, uh, it was very much, I think, in reaction to or being responsive to, you know, some of the critiques the show had received from a bunch of uh, a trans folks, including some trans folks of color, um, and trying to get a sense of, you know, how do we do this right? And I think also to just stress the understanding that there is no generalized definitive answers when it comes to gender. That's part of the beauty of gender, right? That, um, that there's many different ways of expressing it. There's many different ways uh, of talking about it. You can talk about it in one way that's great for one group that may not be great for somebody who's in another group. Um, and it's not just cut along the lines of cisgender, transgender, non-binary, gender queer, gender fluid, right? There's so many things that go into it. I was just gonna add something to what Carl was saying, which is that the beauty and the pain of the character of Joe is what the character does for the imagination, right? And so it is a reflection of the power of theater, what became controversial about the character. And that controversy in my mind is a good controversy. And so I think, you know, even for me, I, I was in the, the early workshops of uh, the musical Fun Home. Mm. I have never identified as a butch lesbian, but just to see a masculine woman on stage, I just broke down bawling. I'd been in the theater for 20 years. I had never seen that, right? And so what happened with Joe is, is both beautiful and painful because it is that the, the, uh, there's a community out there. And even I think, Lauren, as we talked your own exploration, you imagined yourself in the character in many different kinds of ways. And, and that is what theater is supposed to do. It's supposed to raise those questions. It's never gonna answer them. But man, what we learned was one, we got to talk about it. Two, we've got to think about the language. And three, if we don't start getting some trans and non-binary people in stories, I mean, you know, it's like a desert out there for all of us. So I think we, you know, that was the, the real beauty, but I think the, the controversy is the kind of thing you hope for uh, theater to do. Lauren, I want to talk about your experience a little bit as a performer and the stage door and dealing with fans and, and just your experience working with the impact board um, in general as, as one of our leads and how you think about that resource as you think about future shows that you'll do. Totally. Yeah. And I think I, I also, I, just speaking to this point that we were just on, which yeah. I think you, you usually come at it from a place of you want, you play a specific thing that is yours alone and nobody really knows. And then the audience takes a ton of different things. And this is not just in theater too, but I've heard this from people who are writers who write books. Carl, I'm sure you've had this with your book. You know, many different things people take. Alanis has had this with what she, people think she writes the songs about. So I think that's the common perspective to come from. Mm -hmm. And it's part of what makes art great. And also I think with this very specific issue of representation for trans and non-binary folks, there is a need for real specificity. Um, and because there is such a desert of representation as Carl was saying, that I think, um, and that's something that I think I learned and came to terms with during this process is that um, I really loved the gray area of Joe. And I think I recognized that that gray area with many, many good intentions sometimes had a harmful impact on people. And I think that was important for me just individually as an artist and I think for the show 
Um, and that was some of the really good feedback. So I, I talked with a lot of people at Stage Door and talked with people on social media. And um, I know I, I wanted to support everyone in how they saw the character. And I, and I felt really, um, I really didn't want to invalidate anybody's experience of the character. And um, Joe's story created so many moving, incredible emotional responses. And when somebody is sharing a deeply personal emotional response with you, all you ever want to do as an artist is say, that's amazing. Thank you for seeing that in the character. That's incredible, you know? Um, yeah, and I think, I think I, I look back and there's stuff where I see that I, ways that I talked about the character that I think were mistakes. And I can look back on that now and say, I wouldn't do that again. Um, and one of the things that, one of the things I think about is during that time, I started um, using they, them pronouns to refer to the character when I was talking with fans about her and um, at stage door and on social media. And I, I made that, choice because I, I was trying to refer to the character in a way that left room for how any audience member experienced the character's identity. And I, and I wanted, I wanted to affirm that this character could resonate with so many folks in such an expansive way. Um, and I didn't want to use pronouns that would invalidate trans folks experience of the character. Um, and I, at the time thought this would be the most gender neutral option that would leave it expansive. And now I look back and I see, yeah, that felt to a lot of people like I was confirming that this character had a trans identity that I don't hold and that wasn't developed. I guess the only thing I would add is uh, a line I did not create, but when it was told to me, I have not forgotten it. And that is nothing about us without us, which I thought was a really beautiful sentiment about inclusion and diversity in both the storytelling and in the story creators. Um, and I, I hold that very dear. This show holds that very dear, which is why we put together this impact board to make sure that we were not creating anything about someone without someone. So anyway, I, I, I impart that line to you. Feel free to use it. I, did, I, I take no real credit. I did not author it, um, but it's brilliant. This was a glorious, beautiful conversation that was so meaningful to me. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a queer theater producer in a, in a business where there's not a lot of female queer theater producers. So um, I've been finding my way throughout my career as well. And I'm just grateful to have colleagues and friends like you guys to guide me and help me and make me better. Um, Congrats on your Tony nomination, Lauren and Diablo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And let's fight another day for a better cultural America.